Greetings all you know-nothing students out there, I'm Din, and I'm coming at you with another review of My Hero Academia, this time chapter 217, titled New Power and All for One, where we see that Bakugo is trying his best in order to get Deku to once again unleash the power of the Black Whips. However, Deku is f actually finding it a little bit hard to get it to activate. Deku remembers the discussion they had had previously and earlier in the day for the most part, where Bakugo had deduced that, you know, oh, you've been having these kind of side conversations with these, you know, entities within your power. And he questions the fact that Apparently, All Might had no real idea about all of this, and All Might confirms that Nanashimura didn't have any information about this as well, as the one who came before her was a young man with black hair. Bakugo questions the fact that Deku seems to be the first to have truly unlocked the other powers that exist within One for All. You know, and he questions what it had to have been in order to induce this state, just unlock this power within him. Deku comments about the fact that the per previous person had mentioned that the time had come and there, you know, so there might have been an external cause to it. Bakugo kind of deduces this for to be the result of possible influence for all for one which takes everyone a little bit off guard but you know Bakugo makes a very sound argument one for all originated from all for one so you know it kind of in a way kind of makes Deku as I've said previously in previous videos very much similar to all for one to a certain degree you know that's that, for the most part, hasn't changed, you know, this ability to just stockpile all these quirks. The only difference is, all for one, you know, is able to just steal it right on the spot. Meanwhile, one for all, it's one that's passed down. You have to willingly give it from person to person. You know, it's a very interesting, you know, dynamic where it's just like one just takes whatever he wants whenever he wants, but the other has to have a bond with someone, has to trust someone. There has to be a bit of a good standing relationship in order for the power to be passed on. And so that's why Bakugo was doing his best to put Deku in some form of danger in order to kind of awaken these powers within Deku to get him to use it properly. But Deku feels that the purpose behind this might be misguided, as at the time he felt that, you know, the Black Whip was a power that he wasn't ready to use at the time. He feels that his thoughts of wanting to use it further down the line might have actually caused it to lock within himself until a point where he can actually unlock it yet again. So they all end up calling it quits with Deku not really knowing what to do with this power or this knowledge, not really knowing where to go with all of it. Meanwhile, in a moment that I'm, I'm glad we're finally seeing after all this time, we see that cla both class 1A and 1B are actually just hanging out in the dorms, which is a long time coming because it's weird that these two classes have never truly hung out with each other until this point. They're both in the hero course, they sh there should be a closer camaraderie between the two classes than what we've actually seen, rather than this, you know, rivalry for the most part you know having this moment actually makes them seem like legit kids also Mina Ashido you are doing the world a favor by putting Mineta in this clockwork orange s correctional program hopefully you can you know deprogram Mineta's very perverted tendency and at least get him to calm the fuck down a little bit 
but you know it's this nice little moment but in comes Todoroki questioning the fact that Deku seems to have two quirks but Deku kind of plays this off in saying that it mu it's a derivation, uh, derivation. I, I don't know how to say this word. It, it's a derivative trait for him. You know, he might have some form of other quirk within him because of his parents. Just like how technically Todoroki has, to a certain degree, two different quirks. You know, he shoots fire and he shoots ice. Technically, you'd only have one or the other and never really both. So, you know, there you go. Just kind of like how Tokoyami he has the bird aspect and then he has the shadow power. I feel like those two things are very mutually exclusive. One does not truly tie in with the other. So, Deku's able to play this off. And I love Bakugo's comment that is just like, man, this guy is both sharp and dense all at the same time. But Todoroki has no reason to believe otherwise for the most part. Or no reason to actually care. He trusts Deku. So there's no reason why he wouldn't, you know, believe Deku for the most part. And Todoroki himself feels that it's time for him to start truly stepping up what he can truly do, especially after that training match. So he ends up swallowing his pride for the most part and contacting his father in order to get his dad to teach him the flash fire. Next, we have all the teachers discussing everything that Shinso was able to do and that they've decided that they will do their best to... You know, focus on grooming Shinso into becoming a hero. And we even have this sweet little moment where President Mike mentions that Shinso was very similar to Aizawa back in the day. So, yet again, we have another moment of, you know, deviation from a lot of past shonen, where this other character who is being trained by the person who should by all means be the real mentor for Deku and the rest of them. You know, Aizawa has found his own personal protege that he really wants to take some time and, you know, get to understand and study and develop with. So I think that's a very sweet moment. So I definitely feel that means that Shinso should be in class 1A. We'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. Meanwhile, Iri, when meeting Monoma yet again, mentions that he is the, um, what is it, dark face of UA, which is the way that Mario had described him back there in the sports festival. It's just like he's a darker aspect of the world of heroes. You know, the very callous nature that Monoma you know, shows off from time to time, and Monoma is a little bit hurt by this, where he desperately tries to say, no, no, I'm a hero, I'm trying to be one of the good guys and all that, which sh truly shows just how much people just find him so despicable, which is hilarious because Horikoshi has gone on record saying that he never meant for Monoma's character to be seen as this reviled and despicable. That's the true irony of Monoma's character as a whole. But Aizawa does have Monoma try to copy Eri's ability, only for him to be unable to actually do it. And when asked about this by Deku, you know, Monoma states that this is because she is very similar to Deku. As Deku's ability, as Monoma states, is one that stockpiles abilities. It's an energy that wells up within and is, you know, distributed in a certain way. But with Monoma, he can't, you know, unlock certain traits that don't, you know, naturally just come, you know, with ability which causes levitation or certain aspects, you know, explosive sweat and stuff along those lines. That's easy, he can just do that at a whim. But with Deku's ability, which stockpiles other abilities, you know, Monoma has nothing stockpiled within him, he, nothing has been passed on, so nothing was able to activate for Monoma. Same thing with Eerie. You know, Eerie's ability is a type of energy manipulation within her. You know, it's not a more natural given thing. The Horn, you know, he can replicate, but not her power in general. 
so he's unable to do that and you even get this explanation as fat gum uses the impact of his fat in order to redistribute all that energy and power and then goes into a slim mode and just unleashes it monoma who has no fat to speak of could not use this ability properly without having the same body mass that fat gum has you know a very interesting stipulation for his ability um and when mario asked why azawa wanted you know Mar uh, Monoma to copy this ability, it was in the hope that they would be better able to help Eri understand the full scope of her ability through using Monoma as a conduit. You know, he would copy her ability, you know, use it here and there, build an understanding of it, and they would be able to teach Eri, which is actually an ingenious way of figuring this out. Like, my god, that, that could actually have worked, uh, all things considered. But Eerie ultimately feels that feels down on herself as she feels that her power is just no good. It just causes nothing but problems and pain. But Deku goes in and reminds you, her. It's like, you saved me, remember? You helped me. If not for your power, I you know, would have been done for. And it's not the power, it's how you use it. Much like a knife. You, you use a knife, it can harm people, but it can also help make delicious food, which is a very easy way to understand this kind of a thing a very simple explanation for a child but this also helps Deku to understand and not have this same fear of his own powers you know the you know power within him and not be so guarded against them you know he ends up kind of fearing black whip because he just was not able to control it it just came out of nowhere but you know it's not the power that's bad is how you use it and used properly it can actually help people so this strengthens Deku's resolve and Eerie's as well to use their powers in order to help as many people as possible which man Eerie's presence is such a good thing for Deku it continues to just motivate him in ways that I never would have expected and I'm just it's just such a very sweet relationship as a whole but that's the end of our chapter we'll be on a hiatus next week hopefully Horikoshi's just gonna take a little, little bit of a break get some downtime because if you didn't know these people are way too overworked you know it's not uncommon for people in this industry to work themselves into an early grave especially in animation you know the working conditions over in Japan are not the greatest and I wish they had more unions and stuff like that you know I, I love seeing these series released in a timely manner but if it comes at the expense of the person creating I, I don't want that I want them to continue making bigger and better series you know I want to live to live long enough to see their series come to fruition and if that means you know taking a break here and there so be it I mean dude I read comic books and that's a monthly thing having something come out every other week I can deal with that at least personally but hey enough about that Tell me your thoughts on this chapter in the comment section below. What did you think about Deku and his development for Wall? How he should use Black Whip? Are you glad that he isn't immediately just using this power like it's nobody's business? Or would you have liked him to have actually developed it at least to a certain degree by this point? Now, I personally am glad he's just, you know, kind of taking a moment to just kind of re-understand and re-educate himself about these abilities, you know? That was the thing I was saying, like, multiple chapters ago. It's just like, now that Deku's kind of, uh, started to get the hang of his full cowling technique, hell, if he, you know, from here on out, it's kind of smooth sailing. There's no real bugs or issues for him now. But adding in all these other abilities, you know, it really increases the drama factor in a way that I'm really impressed by. And did you enjoy seeing Eerie in this chapter? And the idea that Aizawa had, do you think it was a good idea? Or do you think he should have known it wouldn't have worked? You know, definitely tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. And, you know, if you like this 
video, feel free to leave me a like. And if you didn't, feel free to leave me a dislike, telling me what I did wrong in the comment section below so that I might better myself for future videos. And hey, how about subscribing? Because I'll definitely be bringing you more educational videos from the world of my hack hero academia as soon as possible. But until then, I want to thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.